my name is Mina Chetinkaya Rundell uh, from Duke University, and today's Coding Out Loud episode, I am joined by Martha. Martha, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Martha Boaje. I am a senior here at Duke. Um, yeah, I majoring in stats and Kansai. Wonderful. And Martha uh, was taking my data visualization course last semester. So that's how we met. And we found that we have some similar interests, particularly data illustrations. So we're going to base things off of that today. Um, before we get started, uh, let me point you to um, our homepage for Coding Out Loud. So that is bit.ly slash coding dash out dash loud. Um, and you'll see links to each of our episodes. And so the fourth episode is here. Um, and um, in addition to joining us on YouTube, which you're already there probably if you're hearing this, um, you can follow along on our Studio Cloud. So if you click on this, this will bring you to an R Studio Cloud project with some of the packages we're going to use pre-installed. Or you can click on see source code um, if you would like to grab the R Markdown uh, file that we're going to be kind of facing things off of and work locally. What I am going to do is go back and actually get started with the project on our Studio Cloud. So if you also click on this um, and wait for a second, you'll see an R Studio project popping up. And as this is popping up, um, let's go ahead and share our inspiration for today. And so what I am going to do is here. And Martha, do you want to tell us a little bit about our inspiration image for the day? Uh, yeah, of course. So I think I, to start with, I think I knew that I kind of wanted to do something that involved like recreating a really cool visualization. Um, we had done something like that in the 13 class that I took with Mina, and it was really cool. Um, so yeah, we started talking a little bit about different visualizations that we could do. And Mina suggested looking at Mona's work and it was amazing. She has a lot of really cool visualizations. Um, I think this one stuck out to me because of, I don't know, I just thought it was a really interesting way to visualize data with a keyboard use, with just like letters and a keyboard. And uh -huh. yeah, I think, yeah, I think originally this is like a heat map, but we're gonna use, or it's, it's we're gonna find out what different packages we use, but yeah. 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 So for this inspiration image, uh, we're going to, I think our goal was to maybe stick with the layout. So our goal is to create a keyboard and color in the letters based on some data. Um, except this particular image was based on kind of keyboard usage um, uh, for people who type in English. So we're not going to use that same exact data set. We're going to use a different data set and we're going to try to stick to the colors as well. So We'll revisit the image a couple times uh, during the um, during the episode, but let's go back to our Studio Cloud and start with our first task is going to be um, starting with the data set. So, Martha, you have the idea of um, working with Wordle. Have you played Wordle? Yes, I have, and yeah, I think it it's become kind of a like a joyful collective online experience where people share, share the wordles and I thought it'd be cool to like do something with that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. So if you, um, so here we have one um, example. So we looked for some wordle data sets and this was one that you found. So let's go there and visit that real quick. Um, I think this is a list of all possible wordle words. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting this data into R. And our goal is to work with the first letters of these words. So we're going to make a kind of a heat map on a keyboard of the first letters of the word. So let's go ahead and get this data into R first. Um, to do that, I'm going to get the URL to a raw version of this data. Um, and let's copy that. And what function could we use to get this into R? So we're going to use the tidyverse. Um, so something from the read R package. What, um, what might be an option? Any ideas? 
It's going to be read something. Um, I think Let's try and read CSV. CSV. I, uh, oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, read CSV. So the, the, yeah. Let's try read CSV. Let's see what happens. Um, maybe that worked. It looks like mm -hmm. that worked. So I'm not a yeah, huge fan. I think fan we have to set of, the header. So. Yeah, our markdown printing the output into my document. So I'm going to say chunk output in console. And let's read this one more time. It looks like this may have just worked. So it's not really comma separated values per se, but there's only one column. So we could have probably used something like read delim as well, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, it says could not guess the delimiter because there weren't any. So let's stick with this. Um, except, what do you think about this here? What's happening? Yeah, I think it's using the first word probably in that list as the header instead of um, creating like a separate header. I think there's an option to specify, give that as a parameter in the read CSV function. I think it's header. header function. Let's take a look. Um, so over here, I think that's the call names because there are no column names. If we take a look at call names, it says either true or false or a character vector of column names. So what if we say uh, call names equals false. Now it actually puts women back in the mix and gives it a funny name. How about we give it an actual title, like a header title. And there we go. So now our column is named word, okay? Um, let's assign this to an object. So we have a data frame with 12,000 something observations, uh, each of which is a word. And um, so that's our data set. And our first task that we had in mind was to find the first letter of these words, right? So how might we go about doing that? Um, I think, uh, the string R package would be really useful just for manipulating strings. Um, and I knew there's right. a function called string, yeah, string sub that we can use to specify that it selects the first letter. Okay. So let's take a look at the documentation for str sub. We can give it a string and then we can give it which, um, which kind of position to start at and which position to end at. So since we want the first letter, what do we want those numbers to be? Um, one I for one each. Two, two. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's, let's try. Let's try one to two. So I'm going to create a new column in my data set. Uh, maybe let's call it first letter. And we'll say this takes the word and then start at one and end at two that gives us two letters so let's do one so that gives us one letter um now we have our first letters extracted now we take a look to see maybe which ones are most common or something yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, how would I go about that? I have this saved um, in a data set now in Wordle. Yeah, so I think we can select the column with, oh, the variable with the first letters and maybe group them together and count each distinct occurrence of a letter. Right, so we can use the, right, we can do count of the first letter. So this puts them in, alphabetical order. Um, if we want to see which one is the most common, we could add sort equals true. Things like S by a long stretch is the first most wow. common first letter. So mm -hmm. when you play Wordle, is there a particular word you start with? 
I, um, I, like, I'm not sure why S. I think maybe because of all the plural words, maybe. I'm not sure. But those are the first letters, not the last. I really don't know either why mm -hmm. S, but yeah. maybe, maybe it's mm -hmm. a common um, first letter. So we can, let's pop this out and take a look at, um, you know, all the possibilities. So actually each of, there are 26 entries. So it looks like each letter gets to be first once, but the least common is X, which is, I would have guessed that mm -hmm. maybe. I thought about it and then s is the most common okay so we now have letters and some frequencies and if we think back to that keyboard um kind of diagram we could um sort of color them in based on their frequencies um maybe let's save this data set as wordle counts because we're probably going to want to come back to this data set with the first letter and the number of occurrences um, again. All right, our next task is to draw a keyboard. Um, um, where shall we get started? Yeah, so I think Mona's original image is, as we, I think I mentioned before, is a heat map. I think she did it with a heat map, but there is a really convenient GG keyboard package um, made by uh, made by Sharla that like yeah. offers a lot of functionality that we can use leverage for this project. Um, yeah, let's take a look at this. So, you know, one of the nice things about this ecosystem of our packages is that, um, if you're wanting to do something, maybe someone has already solved the problem for you. So in our case, we were wanting to draw a keyboard to reproduce that image. And look, somebody has written a ggplot2 extension of sorts where the geom is a keyboard or keyboard keys. Um, so it looks like, let's take a look at this. We can draw keyboards. Um, we can give it different different colors with a palette and we can draw different shapes of keyboards maybe yeah. there are different layouts for the keyboards so generally when i am trying to um kind of get started with a completely new package i just you know will copy um one of the pieces of code and try it myself and see if I can just like reproduce it. So let's go ahead. We've installed and loaded that package already. So let's go ahead and try running this to see, can we even get the results? Yeah, the, the um, we kind of just like move things around a little bit and maybe zoom out a little bit. Yeah, we can get a keyboard like the one in the documentation. So what do we want to do next? Like drawing a keyboard seems easy. Um, yeah, so I think maybe um, it might make sense. Oh, I think there's a couple of ways we could go. We could try to get kind of the color scheme we wanted from we want from the original image, or maybe we can think about how we want to distribute or the distribution of the frequency of each letter, maybe we set up the boundary so we can have the cutoffs for each different color range. Um, right, Yeah. so let's go ahead and do that. So let's, uh, so our ultimate goal is to impose those colors onto this keyboard. But since the keyboard drawing part seems easy, let's do a little bit of data prep, right? Um, in order to be able to do that. So to do that, I will add a new R chunk um, let me zoom back in again, just so the font isn't tiny. And let's take a look at this Wordle counts data set. Um, how many color options did the original image have? If we wanted to maintain that same color palette, if we were to go to that um, link. The original It has around, it has 
six, right? Or maybe seven even, because there's like a red and then a dark red, right? Okay, so would you like to use the same color scheme then? Yeah, I think it would be cool to use the same color scheme. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I am going to use the digital color meter on my computer, which will allow me to hover on the um, the colors. And unfortunately, I don't think that part is being shared since it's only sharing my screen. But our goal is to try to get the hex codes of these um, colors, right? Um, so one way is if you're like on a Mac, there's a um, um, piece of software called Digital Color Meter that's built in that we could use to get the hex codes for each of these um, six color or seven colors. We could also potentially upload this image somewhere and, um, you know, get for look for some automated match. But let's go ahead and try to get those colors in. So we have dark blue, a light blue, a green, a yellow, an orange, dark orange, and a red. Um, So do you have a different way of getting these um, colors? Did you have a different idea for getting them? I, I, I had the same idea because I think in previous classes we've used the color, like the hex picker that you can download. Um, for computer. Okay. Okay. So I will try to get these colors in as quickly as I can. Um, and I apologize that I'm not able to share that portion of my screen because I was having some screen sharing issues and decided to just say, mm, I will only share one tab, not thinking about the fact that I may want to share something other than just my browser window. But I am almost done. Okay. So I've taken some notes that we can pop into um, our studio and kind of go from there. So let's say our color scale, we're going to use these um, hex codes. And R will actually happily paint things um, if you give it a hex code. So that's kind of neat. Um, and what else do we want to do now that we have our colors? Um, yeah, I think the next step is uh, based on the Wordle counts data set, trying to determine the cutoff for each color range. Um, yeah, um, maybe we can look at the summary statistics and see roughly um, what they are. Distribution. Okay, that sounds good. So let's call this, these are our color options. And then next we want to create like a color scale really. Um, and we might want to do something like maybe summarize the minimum, maximum, what else would be useful, the mean, um, yeah, maybe the, maybe. yeah. If these are the four kind of uh, summary statistics we want, um, let's say I want the minimum of n, I want the mean of the n variable, the standard deviation of the n variable, and the maximum of the n variable. Our values range from 16 to 1560 with a mean of 498 and a standard deviation of 349. 
The min and max are like helpful, but I feel like I don't know how to come up with a color scale necessarily based on the mean and standard deviation. Maybe some quantiles. Yeah. Maybe we can look at um, like the 20th, 40th, 60th, maybe. Yeah, okay. What it looks like. So let's do the 20th. And you said. 40, 60, maybe also 80? Yes, that's good. Okay. 70, 80. All right, so we have some cutoffs that we can use. I feel like it would be helpful to visualize this data, like before we put it on the keyboard, like just as a numerical variable, just to take a look at a picture of the distribution. Yeah. What do you say? That'd be helpful. Yeah, this sounds good. So, Maybe. Just... so we can do Wordle counts. Um, and then maybe let's just visualize the distribution of n. So I'm going to put that as my x aesthetic yeah. and let's just make a histogram. A better oh. n width. Okay. Um. So that 1500 one to s is really an outlier. So this is the distribution of our n's. We might also do a distribution uh, or take a look at the first letter and then the n and make a like a bar plot with a geom hole yeah and this tells us what like the letters are like so if we want to, hmm. to pick some cutoffs for these um different colors that we have What um, might those be? Hmm. Let's take some notes. Okay, so here are the summary statistics from before. Hmm. I think it might make sense to just have, well, if we do the 1500 as like that red in the original image, as like anything about that, that might just be one data point, I think, right? Because only S has. Yeah. So maybe we can do... But I think that's okay, because that's that's clearly okay. like something that should maybe stand out. Um, so let's do that. Yeah. The dark red will be the really high one. Okay. Yeah, so anything over a thousand counts, it looks like, because it's the only one that's... Yeah, sure, we can do that. Anything over a thousand, yep. Um, and then... For the dark orange, um, so the 80th quantile is about 736. The previous one is okay. 595. Maybe, yeah, that sounds right. good to me. If we do the um, 325 from the 40th, 189, cut off here. And then um, maybe dark blue will just be nine. all the other keys. Like anything, like the non letters could be the dark blue. Yeah. Um, okay, and then we can make that light blue 16 for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, let's see. What if we did. I'm going to try something. So we have this bar plot here. Let's put a horizontal line. So that's a geom oh, H line. Yeah. Um, and at least one of these lower ones. And we can play around with it to see what might be one that gives us more than just that um, one observation. So we'll say Y intercept is equal to if we do 16. I intercept. So that will just capture the X. If we do yeah. something like 30, 
Hmm, that's still not capturing anything other than that 40, nope. 100? It looks like around 60, maybe. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. If we do something like 80, it might capture the Q and the X. I don't know. Yeah. We could go either way. We could make it 16. Let's make this um, 20 or something like that. And then it will just make the X the really light blue. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. So we have some colors, some cutoffs. Um, and now we need to grab a keyboard and start adding these colors. So how might we want um, to go about that? Yeah, so yeah, I was looking at the she was she was reading for G keyboard, and there are different keyboards you can specify, and I think maybe trying to find one that's closer to um to a Mona's original image. Um, okay, I think so that sounds like a good idea. I can specify in my keyboard, and I think, yeah. Sorry, say it again. Which one? Um, the one that that looks closest to me is a sixty percent. I think zoom in, so it zooms into like sixty percent of the keyboard, and I get to all the letters plus a few different uh, non-letter keys. So you can specify that as the first uh, parameter in the GG keyboard function. Oh, like this one here? Yeah. 60%? Yeah, that keyboard. <coughs> OK. Yeah. OK, so let's go ahead and let me just remind myself what, um, let's go ahead and copy this. But let me also just remind myself Yeah, you're right. That looks that does indeed look just like the one there. So let's go back to our Studio Cloud and copy that. Okay. Well, that's a good starting point. Now what do we do? Um, okay. So I think we're also going to specify, I think we can specify a palette, but it's interesting because we're, I think we're not going to use any of the colors that the palette would, because um, we're changing the color scheme entirely. So the most neutral right. palette, just to pick something that we can work off of, is the, is the magic one. So we can pass in a keyboard palette. Um, we can change the, the one that's specified right now. So it looks like keyboard palette is the function that gives us the options, maybe. You said the magic one is the most uh, kind of neutral? Yeah, it looks the most neutral. Yeah. Let's start with that. OK, right? Right? Yeah. Um, and now okay. what do we want to then, do? So, yeah, so um, I think we might have to do a little bit more data manipulation, but I can. Um, so the way we can fill in the different colors we want is um, you can pass, there's like a highlight keys function. And even though it's not specified within the source code, you can still pass in a fill, um, a fill parameter, which um, like will fill in the color that you oh. want it. Um, so that, yeah. Okay. Um, so okay. I think there are more. So for the various keys. Oh, no, go ahead. No, that sounds great. Go ahead. Yeah, so so what we can do is we can pass in like the example code where um, there are different three different keys specified. So we can specify all the keys mm -hmm. we want to highlight and provide um, and then also provide like a, a vector of the colors we want. So I'm trying to think about the best way to do that because it's, and then it's going to fill them in for us okay. based on the color. Um, I so see. Okay, that sounds I'm thinking good. So maybe... let's run this sample code. But this says, so this is the color. So we want to do like fill of, so what you're saying is if I did red, blue, and green, maybe. Yeah. 
So that's how it fills those up. Okay. Yeah. And you, oh, you also have to pass in an alpha value so you can still see the, um, Ooh. the letters. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we want something like yeah, this. So we can play around with it. And maybe we don't want the color. Oh, no. Um, oh, the original, the like the yellow outline. Yeah. Is there a way to... Um, there we go. Oh, it needed it to yes. be British spelling. Okay. All right, great. So we'll do something like this. You're right. Um, what does this do? Adjust text color because it was in the original thing. Let's take it out to see if it looks good enough for us. Right. So that was just like changing. It seems button. like that. Mm -hmm. So this is a good starting point yeah. for us. Now we need to bring our data and our colors in, right? Yeah. Um, if we want to do um, this, what shall we do? Yeah, I think, okay, so I think we can add, um, the first idea I had was we can add uh, a column to, we can add a column to our Wordle count data frame where mm -hmm. we pass in, like we can add a color um, variable where we pass in the color based on the cutoffs we decided. And then yeah, pass that yeah, over we can to do the that. Like, function. Okay, that sounds good. And so basically, depending on the value of the n, we'll define the color, right? Um, yeah. So since there are many options, Maybe we can use a case when statement for doing that. Yeah. Okay. So we do a case when, and basically what we'll say is if N is something or other, make the color something. So if N is, you know, equal to zero, make the color this. Basically that's what we're saying, right? Yes. And then if n is less than 20, lining these up, um, make the color this. I wonder if there's a less tedious way of doing this. So let's bring um, these over. I'm going to do is I'm going to line these things up so they're a bit easier to copy and paste in a column. And so we did the first two, so I'm going to start here. Let's bring them over here. And with the Alt key, I can like write on multiple lines. Let's bring them over. Oh, what happened? Oh, my. Okay, cut them out, place them on the other side. Go to the end, say so we're going to want a comma at the end. All right, and then we need to figure out our conditions, right? Yes. So, in this case, we're looking for n is greater than um, 20 and less than or equal to 189, right? And let's make this yeah. less than or equal to as well. Okay, and then here it's going to be n is greater than 189 and n is less than or equal to 325. So we're just keep carrying these around. And it's less than or equal to 595. 595. This is Less than 736 or less than our. Hmm. Do we do this right? We wanted the last cutoff um, to be. 
because the last one should have been oh, um, greater than a thousand, right? So maybe yeah. we needed to like. I. So if this is going to be greater than a thousand, maybe just like this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we also can just not specify at all and do the true to capture all the other cases, but we can also be explicit about it. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we could we could do that. Okay, so let's try. Let's try this because ultimately, we have only 26 letters that we need to look through, right? So we can. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'll do is I'll pop this into the viewer. We have some NA, so we need to worry about mm -hmm. these ones that are between 595 and 920. Five. Mm, those. Five. Oh, these should have been greater than signs. There we go. Oh. That looks right, hopefully. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Um, so another thing is these letters are capital, but our letters are small. What if I do M? Does my thing, so I need my letters to be capital. So another thing I need to do is convert these to capital letters for the first letter. Yes. So let's go um, ahead and do that. How can I convert the letters to capital? Mm. I will close out this case when, and then I'll say the first letter is something of the first letter. So we just need to find a function that takes a letter and capitalizes it. Yeah. Uh, Probably in the I'm string, string R has one. Yeah. yeah. Um, we like we'll start to have or something like that. Um, STR2, you said? STR to upper? I think that might work. Yes, that looks right. Okay, so let's give this a try. Okay. Now that seems to work. Um, then save our data frame of word accounts. And then what we're going to do is in the highlight keys function, our so this was our keys argument. This was our fill argument. This was our alpha. And this was our color. So our keys will now come from this word of counts data set, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead. And oh, we didn't save it by, I think. Yeah, I think so. Here we go. OK. So Wordle counts first letter is our keys. And then what's our fill oh, is color. Wordle counts color. You can tell why I made the color fill mistake before. Mm -hmm. Let's give this a try. Okay, so we have mm -hmm. uh, maybe the alpha can be like a little less. But look at that. Shouldn't have the. Oh, yeah. 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 I think, yeah, I was waiting to. Um, yeah. So I think the word of counts is only the letter that is considered the other keys on there. Um, so yeah, I was trying to think of a non-tedious way to do it. We might have to just like pull, like add those rows into word accounts. I'm trying to think of how to do that. Maybe we can. Hmm. So the reason 
why this is happening, I'm trying to understand, is uh, in Wordle counts, I wonder, do we have, so we have them as characters, and S is the first one. They seem to like not go in the same order or something like that. Isn't that right? Uh, the Like the color mappings? Mm-hmm. Because in our data frame of Wordle counts, yeah. S should have been the only dark red, but yeah. instead, E is the dark red. Z. Yeah. It's almost like it keeps going in this order <laughs> as opposed to, right? And then the last one is the P. Yeah. So it seems like the letters are not being mapped properly. Yeah, it looks like it. that's, hmm. It's really bizarre. So let's take a look to see how highlight keys works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the function itself and see if we can figure out. Um, so this comes from the key data, which takes the keyboard. And takes the map. It's somehow and adds the fill color. Hmm. But it kind of just doesn't. So let, let's try this with only one of them, okay? Yeah. So because it works when we just. Was, yeah. If the key was S. And we have this really dark color one. It was doing it correctly, right? Yeah. So we know that this is doable then. Now let's add another yeah. one and see what happens. So I'm going to do, this is S and now let's add another color. So let's say C is going to be this color. It, it appears to me like Oh, it switched the color. The color has changed. It switched the colors, didn't it? Yeah, it switch the order of the colors. And now that's okay. Um, let's add another one. One that's a different color. N is this color. Oops. And Now it switched them again, but if I put this first, and does that work? S. No, the order is like no, oh yeah. Weird. So let's do this um, because I can't remember the color name. So we know that. Um. What was our color names that we had? Red, dark orange, and orange, okay? This is what we want them to be. There's some orange for or something. Is it dark orange? And then does this work? Okay. Oh, I think it alphabetizes them. Is that true? Um, it takes the key. C. If you alphabetize the keys, C. 
Let's see. And do this. Oh, it is. Well, let's give them, uh, let's make this pink to make it a little bit more obvious. Indeed, if you put them in alphabetical order, I think it works. Yeah. So what if we put our stuff in alphabetical order? In Wordle counts, what if we then arrange by first letter so that our Wordle counts data set is in alphabetical order, right? Mm -hmm. Would that help? Let's see. No. <laughs> no. No, it still doesn't. Um, I wonder what it's doing now. Yeah, there is like, some sort of pattern that's happening. <laughs> so now I became the only, yeah. uh, the soul and I is. Yeah, that's very bizarre. Um, let's see. So these are the first letters and they're in alphabetical order. And these are the colors that are matched to them. I wonder if it doesn't like repeat colors somehow. Let's take a look. Oh, because we're in the one that we are playing with. Yeah, see how when I have, oh, because this is still in alphabetical order, but now it yeah. made the X be the red. C be the pink. Maybe it is not so much alphabetical order, but in the order that the letters are on this. On the keyboard. Uh, okay. Let's try that. <laughs> so C, X, C, B. I think it is the case that if we put the letters in the order that they are in this, um, so in the order that they appear, so maybe there's something like it's a factor and not a string. So we don't want them in alphabetical order. We want them in the order they appear in a QWERTY keyboard. Yeah. The keyboard. Mm. So we need to figure out um, how yeah. letters appear on a QWERTY keyboard. Well, we should be able to find that. I mean, let's see, QWERTY keyboard layout. Um, maybe letter order. There has to be um, yeah. a place where we can find the letters in order. How? Hmm. Letter order list, maybe. I just want a place where I can copy and paste these from. Copy it, yeah. I bet. I bet maybe it's in that package somewhere. Maybe we can find it somewhere in, in the, the original package. Let's GG keyboard package. Yeah. Layout. The code, so I'm looking oh, for yeah. it in the um, code. Maybe like the read me here. Maybe somewhere here. Nope. Ah. This is the steno keyboard. 
I wonder if there is a, was this the 60% that we were using? Yeah, it was. It's this order, right? Yes. This order here. Um, yeah. 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 So it might can be take... helpful to copy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, I was going to say it might be helpful to just copy every key, including the non letter ones, because we have to go in and fill them in, anyways. I think. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. Okay. So, um, so let's go ahead and get the link to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the link to this. And before I lose that, I'm going to uh, take a note of this link to key layout data. Um, is there a way to, let's take a look at this GG keyboard function quickly to see. Um, right, are we going to like highlight each key basically so that some of them can be the dark? I'm not sure. Um, Let's read this data in. I think we can we can also specify a palette that matches and then just highlight the keys we have and that would just leave all the other ones. Right. Like the colors we chose. Right. Yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll call this keys. And we'll read this CSV file in. We read it in. Go ahead and read that in. And then they are, so these are the alphanumeric ones, I think, from the key type. So if I do keys, filter, key type, equals alphanumeric, and then let's take a look at this. There are a few others that we may not want necessarily, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, oh, or maybe we can say key label, because we just want the, um, is in, remember there's a data set in R that is just the letters. Okay. So this gives us the order we want stuff in. So what we can say is that, um, maybe we can call this key order is this. Right, this is the, giving us the order that we need, and really we can just select the key. We don't really need the other um, variables. And now that we have things in the order we want, could we bring in the color data from the world little count data set? Um, yeah, we can. We can try, we do that, or we can do factor reorder, I think, and then just reorder those keys based on. I'm oh, sure yeah, we that. could do that. We could do that, but then that would give us a factor variable, which I'm a bit worried then GG keyboard will not mm, like geez, and yeah. will want to string it, right? Maybe let's yeah. try to keep it as character. So we could try to join. So we'll do a left join of the wordle count data wordle count data and then we'll say by key and first letter mm -hmm. oh first letter did i not say that right 
Oh. Joint columns must be present. Joint columns must oh. be present in data. Yes, I believe. I oh, am. maybe. What do you think might be the issue? I think it might be by key equals first letter, maybe. Let me look. Oh, 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 yeah, you are right. You're absolutely right. Okay. Um, so now our key order data, which is weirdly named for what it is. Um, <laughs> maybe let's call this Wordle counts ordered. That's a better name for what that is. And then let's try to bring our, these were our test things, but let's try to grab this. It didn't work for us before and try it with Wordle counts ordered. Hmm. There, it's not called first letter anymore, maybe. It's called key. Key. I think we did it. That looks right. Yes, that looks right. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at this keyboard palette. And it says that you can do like a custom something. Um, um, yeah, you can. Key palettes um, have the following fields. Color of keyboard. I wonder if we could do something like so let's do something crazy like red here I don't know maybe that's something that we would need to figure out another time but something we would want to do is try to fill in the color into those other um, keys right yeah so that they could yeah. be that dark blue that we had as opposed to the light blue yeah um i'm trying to see if this quickly any one of them that has um palette varmilo kind of has blue blue colors as a background maybe that can quickly let's see which one a uh, varmilo this one here let's try that yeah yeah kind of it's gave a little us more pink. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think what we would want to do to finish this up is create a custom palette where maybe working off of magic or something like that, where the keys are filled in with that dark blue that we had grabbed. Um, and then this way, the rest of it would match it. And then we would change, um, it looks like from the help, um both background and the keyboard mm -hmm. such that they are um basically that blue but i'm having a hard time figuring out how i would do a kind of um custom a custom color. Um, um, yeah so um, it seems uh, like based on the palette so we could define a palette where um let's try this custom pal could be a list of um maybe oh yeah it's like background is blue and then keyboard mm. is blue I wonder if this would work. Yeah. It's in the source. The source code has the magic no. one. So I think we can like um, just change the background color of the magic. Oh, I see. I see. Right. So we could maybe just change the background color of one of those and overwrite this um, keyboard palette function and yeah. overwrite one of them to be that. All right, well, that seems like a good challenge to leave things off with. I think we made good progress. The order certainly got me, but um, we were able to figure that out. So I think that's a win. Um, and if folks wanted to really match the original image we started with, there's just like one more thing left to do. Yeah. 
All right, are you happy with the result? I am happy with the results and it was really fun too. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, I really enjoyed it as well. Thanks for joining today and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.